Andrea Thompson is a trans woman. Uh, she's also a music journalist and a, man- a music manager. Welcome back to Drive, Andrea. Joe, hello. What was nice your to speak to you? What was your reaction to today's announcement? Uh, Joe, look, I'm really thrilled that the government's finally making good on its commitment to abolish the Gender Reassignment Act. It's taken them nearly seven years to uh, to come up with this, so it's it's terrific to hear the announcement today. Um, yeah. The processes of the Gender Reassignment Board are just cruel and humiliating and, and completely unnecessary. Uh, these were first promised in, in 2022 by the state government, so uh, over a two-year wait. Would you have liked to have this sorted a little earlier, as you say, very cruel? Uh, well, it's been part of Labor's platform for nearly seven years now. So, um, yeah, and the government has promised to implement these reforms. It is a cruel and unusual and unnecessary process. And what's been announced by the Attorney General today is only one step in the process, not the end point. And the government has continued to leave most of its equity law reforms that they have committed themselves to off the table. So this is one small step forward. Um, But really, as far as gender goes, I don't understand why governments are in the business of making laws that treat one gender differently to any other, which is actually what will be continued with the proposed process post the abolition of the gender, the Gender Reassignment Act. We'll still have to get a letter from a doctor or from a psychologist uh, saying that we have had counselling and that we have had some sort of medical intervention which just medicalises uh, the process of confirming your gender if you are gender diverse. It's not something that any cisgender person has to do. Um, and I'm not sure why governments continue to use legislation to insert themselves into the lives of gender diverse people and treat us unequally, treat so, us differently in the way they do. So you st- think still a, a hurdle, too many barriers to have your, your gender legally recognised? Well, I don't know why we have to have a medical practitioner or a psychologist, as has been said by the government today, certifying that the person has undergone appropriate clinical treatment. It's not up to the government or a doctor to decide what sort of treatment, if any, a gender diverse person needs. That continues to medicalise gender diversity and treat it as an illness, which it is absolutely not. Andrea, I say this with, with utmost respect, uh, as does this person who sent through a text. So I hope you don't mind me putting it to you, but I've got a number of texts asking the same question. This, this is the one uh, most respectfully put. Uh, Daniel <laughs> says, what happens when you have biological males that choose to say they're females and do access female facilities whenever they want? Respectfully, what's your response to that? Nobody chooses to be gender diverse. I can tell you, having lived my almost 60 years on this earth as a gender diverse woman, that it is not a journey I ever would have chosen. And in fact, if I had a choice, I would have said no thank you. I would rather be the gender I was assigned at birth and not have to go through the absolute torture that I had to go through to become the person that I am and to be able to be out in the world and to live as who I am. Um, it just doesn't happen that, that men wake up one day and say, I prefer to be a woman so I can go to a women's change room. It's just a complete furphy. What does it mean to have your gender acknowledged legally? How significant is it, Andrea? Well, the significance here, and, and this is why it's significant that the government has kept the rest of its equity law reform off the table, is that in Western Australia, Unless your gender has been recognised legally, if you are gender diverse, you are not protected by the relevant sex discrimination legislation in this state. So you don't have protections for being vilified and discriminated against on the basis of your gender, as do the majority of people living in Western Australia. So it's important for that reason. But it's also important symbolically and for the sake of being an equal human being in relation to every single one of your peers, because the majority of people unremarkably carry their gender. They never have to prove it to anybody. They never have to apply to have it legally recognised. So it's an important symbolic step that gives us equal footing with every other human being that lives in this state. And I think that's a reasonable thing to expect. 